everyone, I'm Blair from No Rolls Bard, and welcome to the second episode of Board Game Cosplay. For this episode, we're going to forget about the absolute queens that are magical girls, and look towards a much more literal queen, the queen chess piece. With the queen, I wanted to ask the question, what would this chess piece look like if it had a character? As it's not really human, and when you look up chess mascot, you get, well, this. I wanted to take it upon myself to create the most badass suit of armor fit for this iconic game piece. To do this, I knew I wanted to draw inspiration from some source of media, as here on Board Game Cosplay, we can't truly be fully original now, can we? I started considering different shows and video games that I knew I really enjoyed the looks of the armor from, so at first I was thinking Final Fantasy, Fire Emblem, but I ended up deciding on Dark Souls, as there's just no other game franchise that I can think of that just consistently looks so cool with all of the armor. Knowing that I wanted this to be my inspiration, I took to Pinterest and began doing a bit of browsing on Dark Souls, as well as a tiny, tiny bit of Demon's Souls. De Demon's Souls. Demon's Souls. The other Souls game <laughs> that isn't Bloodborne. When thinking about chess, I tend to think of the very classic designs, such as the Staunton set or the much older Isle of Lewis design. With the Isle of Lewis design, I find that the white ivory gives a really nice stone looking quality that I think would work really well towards a Dark Souls inspired look. After a quick search, I found three characters that really stood out to me. The first being the Throne Watcher from Dark Souls 2. This design was already really close to what I was envisioning for the Queen. There's something very regal about it, very ivory stone looking. Second was the Knight Artorius. Now this is such a classic Dark Souls design. It's one that I immediately think about when I think about the armor for Dark Souls, so I knew I had to include it. Third was Lorian, the elder brother from Dark Souls 3. Again, this character just looks so regal, even if he is just like <laughs> lurching around on his knees for the majority of the fight. I also found that his crown had these really cool spiky bits that I felt would work well as an inspiration for the Queen's Helmet. After knowing that these three characters would be my main inspirations, I ha also had a quick look at some general night class art just to get ideas for some basic shapes and designs that are seen throughout the games. Now on to actually figuring out the design. I sketched out a quick idea of various things I felt were Dark Soulsy while still looking like the Queen from Chess. So after having this initial design, I then went in and created a more detailed design for each piece. Unlike Magical Mr. Monopoly, I just decided to create some very loose ideas for each piece as I knew going throughout the process, I'd probably want to change things up depending on how much I felt it needed to look more like chess or more like Dark Souls. For the shoes, I took a lot of inspiration from Artorias as well as the tassets and Right now, before I go on, I'm in no way an armor expert, so I've basically just looked up all of the names of things by looking at diagrams for a brief couple of minutes on Google, so if I get it wrong, I'm deeply, deeply sorry. <laughs> the greaves as well as the pulling were inspired by a night class design from Dark Souls 3. The breastplate was a mix of the Throne Watcher and Artorias, and the gorget was inspired by the Throne Watcher as well. Finally, the inspiration for the helmet was heavily drawn from Lorien, and the gloves were just some basic armored gloves that pretty much everyone ever in Dark Souls has. Before we actually get into making the armor, I wanted to give you some quick handy tips for working with foam. First, there are two different types of foam, of uh, EVA foam that you'll be using. The first is this low density uh, foam. It's a lot more flexible. It's much squishier than its counterpart, which is high density foam. This stuff is really rigid, much less squishy, and it's harder to uh, form into different shapes. For armor pieces that you'll be wearing, I recommend using low density foam, just because it will be more comfortable to wear, also easier to work with. However, for you making props or stuff that has like intricate designs on it, use high density foam. It will just give you a much nicer end product. 
Second, it's really important to wear protective gear while working with foam. When you're gluing it together, you'll be using an adhesive called contact cement, and this stuff is incredibly toxic. Now, we don't want a blight town swamp situation here where every second you're breathing, you get poisoned. We have the availability to wear protective gear, so you might as well just get a respirator. It will really help save your lungs. Also, I highly recommend having some windows open so that when your roommates get home, they are not furious with you. Third, it's really important to keep your box cutter nice and sharp while working with foam if you want to get those nice clean edges. To sharpen it, you can use a knife sharpener or you can even use sandpaper or the bottom of a bowl or a plate. For the majority of this project, we'll be working with foam, so it will be really helpful to have all of the proper tools and materials. Some helpful online shops to check out are Polyprops, SKS Props, Lumen's Workshop, and TNT Cosplay. Alrighty Roo, with all the exposition out of the way, let's actually get to building this armor. To make the tassets, I started by sketching out a basic design with my inspiration in mind. On the pattern, I made sure to draw on arrows to show which way I needed to cut the foam. In order to have your foam pieces not just lie flat together, sometimes you'll have to cut it at an angle to create a point when they're put together. I then finished sketching out the pattern, did a quick taped together test fit to make sure I was happy with the size, adjusted it until it was small enough for my body, and then I had a finished design. I was then able to trace everything onto my 5mm low density EVA foam, which I then was able to cut out. To do straight cuts, you'll want to have your blade slicing through the foam straight up and down so that your edge is nice and flat. To create an angled cut, you'll need to place your blade at the desired angle before you start cutting, then try to keep it at this angle all the way through. For both straight and angled cuts, you'll want to try to do it all in one continuous motion, otherwise the foam won't have as smooth of a finish. To cut a curved edge of the foam, you'll keep your blade at a 45 degree angle away from the table, like you would for a straight cut, and then move the blade as well as the foam similarly to how it feels using a bandsaw. This is my preferred way of cutting smaller pieces of foam with a curve, however, experiment and find what works for you. Once I had all the pieces cut out, I could start gluing them together. To glue my foam pieces together, I use contact cement and smooth it out with the tip of my squeeze bottle. You don't want too much contact cement to build up because it will take longer to dry and it also won't have as nice of a finish. You'll want to wait until the glue is fully dry before putting the pieces together as the glue will grip it to itself best this way. I then created a quick bishop design and cut it out twice using 2mm foam and attach them to the bottom pieces of the tassets. With the bishops now attached, I cut out thin strips of two millimeter foam, which I then glued onto all the edges of the tassets. Man, I really hope tassets is the right word for this because I'm using it a lot. Now I was able to go in with my Dremel and sand down all of the edges, making sure that I have a nice clean edge. At this point, I also added in some battle damage to the armor using the same bit on my Dremel. Finally, with all the details glued on, I could put together the parts of the tassets and begin heat forming. To heat form, I just went over the entire item with my heat gun and then curled up the armor until it stayed in a shape I was satisfied with. I hit it with the heat gun again just to make sure my foam was all properly sealed and then it was ready to prime. To prime my foam, I used Plasti Dip. Now I would show you my tassets being primed and then spray painted in silver, however I did all of the armor pieces in one big batch on the only nice day that we had outside in weeks. So it would be a bit of a spoiler to show you all of the armor pieces at this point. So just imagine that I've done that and let's move on. Once I had the base spray paint on, I then started painting in details. For most of this, I will be using my Citadel paints, which I use to paint my miniatures. This paint has great coverage, so you really don't need to use much for a fantastic finish. And also I already had them, which is extremely helpful. I painted the bishop symbols gold, and then painted the edges a bright silver. With the base paints down, I went over the whole item with a dark wash, which is just black acrylic paint mixed with a ton of water, and then wiped most of it away with a paper towel. This might not look like much at first, but it sinks into all of the edges where dirt would accumulate over time, and makes your armor look much more dynamic and realistic. You can do multiple layers of this until you're happy with the result. With the dark wash done, I then went in with black acrylic paint and individually added shading to each cut I had added earlier with my Dremel. This took a really f 
long, long time. And if you were smart, unlike me, you would just not create so many cuts with your Dremel. But I did, so here I am. With the tacets now looking much grimier and lacking in their luster, I wanted to bring back a bit of shine. I did a quick dry brush of a different golden shade to the bishop symbol, and then went around all of the edges where the metal might be scraped and worn to make it look like some of the dirt had been peeled away. I also went in to some of the flat areas and added some shiny peeled bits of silver as well. Finally, I added some Velcro, which would later be the attachment to the breastplate, and the tacets were done. Oh man, all right. <laughs> I know that was quite a lot of explaining for just one piece. So let's all take a quick breather, get a drink of water, and then we'll tackle the rest. Okay, back to it. To create my pattern for the breastplate, I first wrapped myself in cling film, which I then covered in duct tape. If you've watched the Magical Mr. Monopoly video, this is exactly the same process that I did there. I then drew out my lines for where I wanted the breastplate to be, and then cut myself out to create the various pattern pieces. I then cut out the foam, applied contact cement, and put all of the pieces together. I created a king symbol, which was then cut out of two millimeter foam, and then added it to the front of the breastplate. I used my heat gun to heat seal the foam, and to also form and shape it to my body. With all of the heat sealing done, I went in and added some lovely googly eye rivets using all-purpose glue, and then primed and spray painted the whole thing. I started by painting the king symbol gold, and painting the trim silver. Then, because of the throne watcher inspiration, I really wanted to do the cool etching designs on the corners of the breastplate, so I went in with a darker gray and made some random swirls. I really think this added so much to the finished breastplate and I'm really happy I took the time to do this. The dark wash and the battle damage shading came after this and then I did highlighting on the symbol as well as all of the edges and the rest of the breastplate. I was very lucky to have such a helpful assistant for this whole process. To be able to wear all of these armor pieces, I needed a way to attach them together. To do this, I thought some leather straps would look nice, so I cut some long strips of faux leather and quickly folded them in half and then folded in the edges. I stitched down both sides so that it was nice and flat. To attach the leather straps, I made some score lines in the foam to create an even tighter grip to the fabric, then covered the area with hot glue, trying to be sure not to put on too much in the visible areas as hot glue is very ugly and would distract from the finished item. I pressed the leather strap into the glue, then added Velcro to the end of it, as well as where they will be attaching to. At this point, everything is going to start to sound extremely familiar, so we're just going to speed run this thing. Here we go. For the shoes, I created a cling film and tape pattern. Cut this pattern out, then transferred it to foam. Cut out the foam using straight cuts and angled cuts, then glued some of the pieces together. I dremeled the edges and created battle damage, glued everything together, heat formed the armor around my shoe, then added googly eyes. Finally, with the item constructed, I then primed and spray painted it, and then went in with my acrylic wash and battle damage shading. Then finished it off with some silver highlights, velcro, and elastic, and the shoe covers were done. Much quicker, right? Let's move on to the next one. To create the greaves, I again start out with a duct tape pattern, which I then traced to foam. With the foam cut out, I then put everything together with contact cement. I created a little pawn pattern to put on the front of the greaves, then cut out and attached some trim. I painted the pawns gold, the trim silver, added lots of shading, then finished it off with some highlights. Finally, with some straps and Velcro, the greaves were also done. You want even speedier? <laughs> all right, let's go. Step one, create a tape pattern. Step two, put all the foam pieces together. Did that feel too much like the meme of uh, how to draw a horse? Well, speaking of horses, let's add a couple to this thing. Then add battle damage. Then paint the whole thing with lots of shading and highlights. And then you have a lovely gorget. When making the Pauline pattern, I realized something that I found to be very helpful. If your finished piece is going to have some strange curves to it, imagine looking at it from the side on. With this profile view in mind, if you just draw out those curves and then cut out the pattern, Pattern, this will generally create the curves in mind for the finished piece. Of course, you will need to cut beveled edges if you want the seams to meet at an angle, but overall creating these were much simpler than I thought they would be. To put them together, they received the same treatment of cutting out, gluing, putting together, and painting as the rest of the armor pieces. For some reason, I really struggled with the bracers because I wanted them to look like the Throne Watcher's gauntlets, but these aren't gauntlets, they're bracers, and bracers don't work like that. So finally, I settled for a less exciting design and just created these by making a duct tape pattern cutting out the foam and putting everything together. I also used this really cool half dowel to create a nice rounded edge for where my wrist would be. I painted the whole thing silver and gold, added some straps, 
and the bracers were good to go. For the pauldron, I created a paper pattern, which I then cut out of foam and glued together in the regular fashion. I thought having the queen's own sigil on the pauldron was appropriate, but maybe this is just because I've recently watched The Mandalorian. I added even more battle scarring, added paint to the whole thing. What I don't have footage of, for whatever reason, is adding the leather strap that goes around my chest, but that's what I did next, and that was it finished. To make the gloves, instead of creating what would be the worst cling film and duct tape mess in the world, I used some disposable gloves and drew my design onto that. This can be a bit of a nightmare to cut out, but once you do, you have pattern pieces which then can be transferred onto foam. Once you've sealed and painted your foam with your base color, you can then add all of the details how you would with any other armor piece, just much, much tinier. To create the gloves that these foam pieces would be attached to, I first traced my hand and cut out the pattern. I then was able to pin the pattern down onto some fabric, which I sewed with plenty of room around the entire pattern. Once this is cut out, you have a nice snug fitting glove. And yes, before you ask, this really is not the proper way to make gloves, but I'm about to hot glue a bunch of weird foam pieces to it, so I think we're already past the realm of having normal gloves. I'm sorry in advance for the nightmare I know this wig head will give some of you. Why did I use red sharpie to draw on the features? Literally any other color would have been better. Anyways, to create the helmet, I first put a wig onto the wig head. My wig head has been modified to be the size of my head, which is a whole other process of creating, but if you're curious to see how to make one for yourself, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the process. I made sure to cover my wig with a wig cap just to make sure I didn't accidentally catch any of the hair fibers while working on the pattern. I first created a cling film and duct tape pattern around the wig head. To make the little bit around the nose more pointed, I added some paper towels underneath and built that area up until I was happy with it. With the duct tape pattern cut off, I was able to try it on and adjust it to be the shape that I wanted. At this point, I did feel an awful lot like Birdman, which I was really feeling at the moment for whatever reason. I cut out all the pattern pieces and then cut out the foam pieces, then glued everything together, occasionally trying it on making sure I was pleased with it. Once I had the basic shape and the eye holes cut out, I heat formed the helmet over a large plastic ornament ball. You can also use a bowl to basically do the exact same thing. I then created this Burger King looking crown part to put around the helmet base by creating a paper pattern and then cutting this out of foam with a really intense beveled edge so that it would lie nearly flat onto the helmet. To hide these seams even more, I used some foam clay and smoothed out the entire area before going in and adding in even more foam clay to create various raised designs over the entire helmet. I also used this foam clay to create a ball on the very top and surround it by little Darth Maul spikes because it was feeling a bit plain. I dremeled the edges to try to get those smooth surfaces and made a ton of details all over the foam clay sections to try to make it look like hammered metal. I think the final result came out really cool. I spray painted the helmet with it primed and ready to go and then went in and added lots of silver and gold paint all over the whole thing. Then like the rest of the armor, I did a dark wash followed by lots of shading and highlighting. And finally, my Lorien slash Throne Watcher Queen helmet was finished. Which leaves one last foam build in this project. I'm always surprised at how easy making a sword is. In my head as a beginner cosplayer, I thought of swords as being really complicated and difficult, but actually, I think it's a super fun project that no one should be intimidated by, and you get a really cool prop at the end. I started by creating a simple design, which was then cut out of foam. On the blades, I cut some trenches in the middle, which I would then put a metal rod into. With the metal rod now in one of the trenches, I slowly put the two pieces together. Using a piece of paper can be really helpful to stop parts of your project getting stuck together that you don't want to be glued. To create a nice sharp edge, I drew where I wanted the main body of the sword to be so that I could make the edges even across the whole blade. I started by carving a lot of it away with my box cutter before dremeling them to create a nice smooth edge. I added a few more details before putting a foam dowel around around the rest of the metal rod, which I then covered with a PVC pipe. I did this really, really badly and would recommend not using contact cement on the whole thing. It's unnecessary and only makes the job messier. I added a few more small foam details here and there, including this weird design that I probably should have used some actual inspiration for, but hey, here's hoping I haven't accidentally used a symbol that means anything. And finally, was able to add some battle damage. The rest should be very familiar to you now. Lots of painting with highlights, then shading, then more highlights. Luna being very helpful like always. And finally adding some leather strips to the grip 
just using some hot glue. As much as I would have loved to have made real chainmail for this, I had neither the time nor the money. So instead I used this method to create a super sticky and uncomfortable alternative. I started off by spraying the rubber carpet grip with Plasti Dip and then quickly realized that this would take a ton of Plasti Dip to cover, so I decided to cut out the amount I would actually use. I used a baggy shirt to get the general shape and then cut the rubber mat while it was folded twice so that when it was opened up, the top would go over me just like a dress. All I had to do then was finish spraying it with silver paint and then hand sew the sleeves. Lastly, to finish this costume, I really wanted some fabric draping around my face and shoulders, so I quickly created a veil and a cape. To make the veil, I cut out some fabric and then quickly stitched down a rolled hem. I added some lace to the edges that would be around my face to create a bit more interest and then painted on some gold chest symbols around the edge as well. Similarly, with the cape, I cut out two pieces of fabric, sewed a rolled hem, and attached the pieces down the middle back. And with these fabric pieces done, we are now done with what I think has turned out to be the most badass chess queen that ever has been. Before going to the reveal, I wanted to have a very quick chat with Iza, who you may know if you've seen the episode of Blood in the Clock Tower that she was in. She is an absolute cosplay master, and I just had a few questions that I think you might also find helpful. To people who are interested in starting out with cosplay, or maybe those who are very new to cosplay, do you have any tips for, for those who are like just looking into the hobby and, and potentially thinking about starting their own cosplay adventures? Oh my god. I mean, I would <laughs> say a big thing is to not feel intimidated by looking at sort of really complex things that people who've been cosplaying for years can do mm -hmm. because obviously people can do that because they have like a lot of experience and they've acquired skills over time i think just look for like resources and references if you're doing a costume if you're like being brave and doing a costume that's more complicated then go and look for other people who've made a similar costume or that costume before there might be a tutorial out there or there might be someone's thread on like a forum or in a facebook group talking about their own process behind making that costume which can really help you even if you don't do it the way that they do it it can give you some ideas and now the moment you've all been waiting for the reveal <laughs> 